Welcome back to Let's Play Shining Force with me, Jerupidus. And we just defeated Kane in combat at Dragonia. And he went to take on Dark Soul by himself. The room exploded and they were both gone. So with nothing else to do, we're going to head back to Rudo. So let's get to it. And he says, wait, don't leave yet. Karen wants to talk to you. So he's blocking our way just like the rocks were earlier. Let's see if the kids have anything new to say. I sure hope the grown-ups come back soon. <laughs> We've kind of repaired the reputation of grown-ups with the children. Thanks for helping Blue. He needed a hero. Really, he became his own hero, though. We didn't do anything. The little girl just got in trouble. And he decided that uh, he would not stand for that. Now, something I want to do before I forget uh, is go directly to the item shop and repair all my stuff. Now, let's see. We'll check Gort's heat axe, but he never damages it. Ever. <laughs> yep, and then let's make sure the power ring is good to go. Totally fine. And then Kokichi's halberd. And we... Oh, I don't want to repair, but I do want to sell. So we'll get rid of Kokichi, all his old stuff. And let's check out everyone else. Ah, uh, Balbs can get rid of his steel sword. We could sell those healing herbs, but, like, medical herbs, but whatever. <laughs> I don't really care. I could probably use a couple of healing seeds, though. So why don't we grab those right away? And then we'll get to talking to, the, to all the kids. We are starting to go through these at a fairly reasonable clip. So you can see how this strategy can end up being a little bit risky, a little bit expensive. Where you keep having to buy these, and your healers can heal a lot more times in battle than someone just holding one healing seed, right? But we're going to be just fine. I see you met Blue. I sure did. It would be nice if he was better and we could take him into combat. It'd be fun to do kind of a more roleplay one where, like, you bring the characters into the combats that make the most sense for them. But believe me, that ends up being a lot more challenging than it might sound. Alright, where do I want to explore now? Why don't we head in here? Yahoo for Blue! Yes, indeed. Yahoo for blue, that's what I always say. Woof. The, the, even the, the hellhound pet has something new to say. That's fantastic. I checked the old records and read something interesting. Do you want to hear about it? Always. I love talking to you, little girl. Listen, the manual of the seal holds the key to awakening Dark Dragon. He must never awaken. The sacred dragon must keep the manual from evil hands. Also, there's something here about a sword called the Chaos Breaker. It says that when the sword is used at the westernmost point of the land, the castle of the ancients will rise from the depths of the sea. Whatever all that means... Did you get the manual? No. No, we didn't. Dark Soul has it? Oh my. This is bad. Very bad. He can use it to awaken Dark Dragon. Yeah, he sure can. And, uh... That's definitely not gonna be a good thing. But he's got it. There's nothing we can do right now. 
Um, so why don't we go topside real quick? Sorry about being nasty earlier. You're okay. I am okay, but you know what? Thank you. I had a dream about you last night. You were going into a castle shaped like a skull? I mean, that sounds like a terrifying dream for a little kid. But I'll tell you what, if I do see a castle uh, shaped like a skull, I am definitely going in there. My parents are coming back soon. I'm so excited. Yeah, they've really changed their minds. Tell Blue to return as soon as he can. We'll miss him. You know what? I will. Blue's great, isn't he? You know what? No, not really, but we'll just pretend he is. Welcome to Rudo. Karen is in. You know what? Since I've been talking about Blue not being great, um, why don't we go to headquarters really quick and check out his stats just so I can demonstrate that. Also, we can grab his dialogue while we're here. So why don't we get some classic Nova advice? You still have a long way to go. Use magic wisely. Give herbs to everyone. That's actually very reasonable advice. <laughs> Okay, so just for comparison, let's take a look at Xylo. Uh, 31, 20, move 7, and agility 18. Blue is 26, 17, and 9. So he's not terrible by any means. Um, but he's just not very good. And if I was going to get him in the party, who would I cut? Like, it would probably be Ken. But I basically never take Blue with me. Um, but maybe this is the playthrough where I do, huh? If I was gonna do that, I should have had him in the last battle, though. So I think it's just gonna... We're just gonna not do that. Despite the fact that he's kind of a cool dragon. So where even is he? <laughs> I have a guess. There he is. Hanging out in bed. Just practicing my tail whip. Still haven't gotten the hang of it. Yeah, now people are already, like, taking up the beds. Headquarters is getting full. But I will say this. 26 attack for a non-weapon user. So, Blue suffers the same problem as characters like Xylo and like Gort, basically people who don't use weapons, is that brand new weapons are a huge attack boost. They're a huge stat jump. And if you don't have the benefit of getting new equipment, you're at the mercy absolutely of the RNG of how much attack you get per level up. Certainly you can get around that by leveling, you know, by grinding like everyone else in the game. If you grind them, they end up being good. That's going to be a common refrain. But A late joining non-weapon user is just going to be worse than basically everyone else that can use weapons. So it ends up being a very difficult problem. I just heard that the rest of the adults are coming back. I like that we rescued the dragon and all the kids are like, the adults can come back and the adults are like, okay, you know what? Now that we have your permission, village of children, we will come back. <laughs> So warm and peaceful, I feel like taking a snooze. I do not feel like taking a snooze because I have been chugging coffee all day, as you may be able to hear in my voice. <laughs> but I do love coffee. I just love it so much. Okay, now that we've talked to everybody, at least everybody that uh, is readily available, uh, let's talk to Karen. Thanks for saving Blue. We're all proud of him. Have you seen Kryn? I have. Oh, well, never mind then. You know what? Let's ask her. Let's tell her no and see what she has to say. She's very excited about something she found. So Kryn is kind of our exposition dump character, same as before. So she is worth talking to if you're interested in what's going on. But honestly, the story is not that complicated, right? Like, Dark Soul is a bad guy. He wants to resurrect Dark Dragon, and he's gathering the tools and resources to do so. That's pretty much it. The main twist thus far is that Kane was actually a good guy, a hero who was being manipulated by Dark Soul. And 
Once again, that's the running theme with Dark Soul, is that the people under his thrall are not all actually bad. So it is in some sense a little bit nuanced that way, but let's talk to uh, Garrett. I think you should go to prompt first, it's south of here. But be careful, there are lots of monsters out there. There always are, but luckily we are in the monster killing business. So, now that we know where to go, which is prompt, let's head there. Be careful out there, there are lots of weird creatures wandering around. Yep, they are going to get uh, axes and uh, ice spells to the face. Ooh, it's Michela. Well, Jerupidus, we meet once more. For the last time, I fear, as you will die here. My minions shall take care of you, but if they fail, I await you in Demon Castle. And let's check that out. So there's not too many, but this is an ambush-like map. Now there's going to be some new things here. But namely, that's that castle that's shaped like a skull. Demon Castle, it's called. <laughs> But we have some new enemies. I believe these bull riders are new, and they have assault shells, giving them 40 attack for a sniper, which is quite a bit. Not as much as Kane, but he was a boss, so 40 is still not a joke. And then you've got these Belials that can cast Bolt, and we saw Bolt when we casted when we casted it using the Halberd. It is definitely a very dangerous spell. So these are flying caster enemies, which is kind of a nightmare. So this is going to be challenging indeed. But, why don't we get right to it? I mean, we're the Shining Force. We're not scared of a few stray monsters, right? I know I said it already, but man. I... I keep remembering that I now have two heat axes for this playthrough and being so happy. <laughs> Yep, Muddle doesn't do anything. I mean, it does. It, it's a status ailment, but... You know, it's, uh, it's never a big deal. Bam! Yeah, and despite the fact that uh, Luke is four or five levels behind Gort, because he's got that power ring, he's able to keep up really nicely. So that is working out perfectly. something that's been on my mind lately. I'm playing this game and the original Final Fantasy kind of at the same time. And it occurs to me that when I make these videos, I like to read up on how people feel about it, see if people have anything new to say about these games. I know the games are very old, so that's very unlikely. But the popular reception for a game is very important. You know, just specifically how I feel about it matters, I think, a little bit less than the way the general public received it uh, on its release and the way people feel about it now. And I've read a lot of people say that Shining Force 2 is a much better game than this one. Now, admittedly, I think I played a grand total of five minutes of Shining Force 2, so you could really say I've never played it. Not really, anyway. Not, not enough to have a real opinion on it. So instead, what I would like to talk about is the flaws of this game and the flaws of the original Final Fantasy. And those flaws, honestly, are kind of what I love about the games. Your flaws make you who you are a lot more than your perfections, I would say. As a human being and as a piece of art. Which I think games are. So, things like the strange hidden items in this game, things like the slide animation in the battle screen, 
those are all indications to me that the game ran out of money and they weren't able to com fully complete their vision, as I've said, uh, said previously. But that being said, those things are kind of what I love about this game. You know, it's those weird uh, idiosyncrasies that for some reason just really resonate with me. I guess you could say it's a little bit like the difference between something that's super polished and something that's obviously handmade. Handmade things have their own kind of charm. They have the fingerprints of their creator very obvious on them. And that's how I feel about a lot of these old games. You know, a AAA title now, when I finish a game, I let the credits run. Because, and I've said this previously, but if you haven't seen those videos, I don't blame you. Almost no one has. <laughs> but what I like to say is that I like to take a moment to appreciate the people that made something that I love. And these old games, the development team is not going to be more than, I think maybe 20 people would even be pushing it. So it's going to be made by a small team. And that means that there are less eyes on it. So there are going to be more mistakes. There are going to be more flaws. And they're going to have less money to do in total what they want to do. And I know I've gushed about it a lot, but I just, I love this game so much. I really do. And I would love to give Shining Force 2 a chance. If that's something you want to see on the channel, you know, leave me a comment, let me know that there's interest. And I could definitely do a blind playthrough of that. Yep, so there's him casting Muddle, and it j So, when it succeeds, it doesn't do much, and it also has the chance to actually just miss and actually do nothing. <laughs> Really not surprised he missed there. They have really high evade, and he's currently under the influence of a muddle spell, so no surprises there. It is tempting to use magic on these flying guys, but it feels like kind of a waste because they're just such... They're, they're not very much of a threat. These ones... Let me show them so... It's clear what I'm talking about. These ones are real threats. We may want to use magic on them because missing these guys and having them get another bolt cast can be very bad. But I think I'm just going to run up on this bowman and try to kill him. Xylo's the only one that can kind of run in there and surprise him. I hope this works. That did not get it. Okay. That could be bad. His, um, level ups that were really bad are starting to show up now. Alright, how bad is this gonna be? Twelve is a lot. I'm gonna have to probably run away. Get him. Yes. Way to go, Ken. Yeah, let's just drop this dude. I do not want him to get another shot off. my 
last usage of the halberd, but I do get a level up out of the deal, so I will take it. But as I was saying, if I could just gush about this game a little bit more. <laughs> I just, I love it so much. It's just so good. It's so, so good. And it's really more than any kind of in-depth strategy or... I mean, it does have a ton of replayability, so there is that. But, you know, more than all of those things, it's really the flaws and the and the weirdness that really just get me. And frankly, any discussion about loving this game, you really can't avoid talking about the soundtrack. And there aren't even that many songs, but I feel like none of them ever really get old. They're all just so well done. And this is even a game from... So, eventually they figured out how to not have a song start from the beginning every time you change environments or screens. Um, but even for songs that constantly are starting from the beginning, I really don't get tired of them. They don't ever become grating or annoying. At least to me. Yeah, Gauntz is not really going to be able to touch this guy, but I do need to be taking actions with him, so let's do it. Oh, did I leave on the, uh, War Spear? I did. Oops. Yep, we've taken two turns and we've dealt a Golem three. I don't love that, but I am going to back off because these guys are coming in to mess me up, which I am not looking forward to. but I may want to save it. I don't want to spend too many resources. I already don't have a cast on the halberd. Yeah! Gort, you beast. Yeah, Gort has just leveled out of control somehow. <laughs> Perfect spacing. This one, yeah, this one's definitely gonna get... Oh, is this gonna attack? I think Guns will survive. Okay. do this. I suppose I can send Xylo here. I think that makes the most sense to do. You'd like to not get these flying units uh, sort of pinned over mountains where you can't surround them. Yep, let's make sure we're using the proper weapons. I am not great with the weapon juggling. I do forget to do it more often than I would like. Yes! Double attack! Every time it fills me with joy. Yep, let's hit it. Alright, 10 is much better. Balbs does with his shiny new broadsword. Six is okay, but I'm getting to the point where I may want to leave Balbaroy behind. Kokichi is already doing way more damage. 
He just has a much better weapon. And is much more capable of standing in and fighting than Balroy is. I really just need them to hit harder. And he's kind of not doing it for me. So he's kind of on the hot seat right now, I would say. And if you're looking at this map like that is so many mountains, it is going to take forever to get through this. You would be correct. It is going to be tough to get through this passageway and all the way down there. There is still a Belial waiting in the wings for me too. So we've definitely got our pathway cut out for us here. flying units and just have them in the uh, in a spot where they're ready. Yeah, I really really need guns to level up. Him sitting there at 1 is concerning. I don't want to leave him behind, but maybe he's a candidate to get cut, too. Which just absolutely shocks me. But as I'm sure I've made abundantly clear, every playthrough of this game is going to be pretty different for you. And when I'm revisiting games like this that I remember just absolutely adoring. I like to try to be open to the experience and not just do things arbitrarily because they're what I always do. So we definitely have some things going on with this playthrough that are outside of my comfort zone. I don't believe I've ever left a bingo behind, and I don't think I've ever taken Ken this far, so it's possible I should have just swapped those two, but at the very least, at the time, it made sense for me to keep Ken. It's a little bit of an experiment. Um... Guns, Guns isn't really going to be able to do much to this golem, so I think I'm just going to have him wait. Okay, nice spacing there. don't want to send Luke in there. I feel like other people won't be able to reach him, so I'm just going to wait. I'm going to let it come to me. Sometimes the best move is to just do nothing. Only four? All right. Because I really want to make sure, since... My spellcasters are going to be at the back. It's going to be tough to drop spells on heavily physically resistant uh, units like this. So I definitely want to make sure that I'm able to surround it. Take this guy out. Okay, level up for Kokichi. Would like some more attack on him, but... No worries. 
I doubt I'm gonna do eight here, but I need to keep taking actions with guns if I'm gonna get him. Okay, seven is actually not bad. But if I'm gonna get him out of this, uh, 13 hit point hell he's in, we really need to make sure we're taking as many actions with him as we possibly can. Kill for Luke? Why not? Oh yeah, Gort's just gonna <laughs> absolutely demolish this Master Mage. Master this. Oh, he didn't one-shot it? What? <laughs> there I was, given my one-liner. Now I'm about to eat a spell. Fortunately, Gort has a thousand hit points, so... He is basically just massively over-leveled for this portion of the game. <laughs> But you know what? I'm totally fine with that, as long as it's not everybody. If you got one unit that's real, real good, there's nothing wrong with that, as long as you haven't been... Well, you know, you, you can play the game however you want, of course. But for me, as long as the challenge is still a little bit intact, as long as I still have to pay attention to what I'm doing, and we don't just bulldoze everything, I'm happy. That's what I want to say. Don't get me wrong, there, I, I've definitely done playthroughs of games where because I just wanted to see what it was like, I've hit the level cap. I think anybody who's even remotely completionist has done things like that. But I find that it's not nearly as... It, it loses the fun once you've accomplished that. Dude, why can guns move this far? Look at this. I know I've got the mobility ring on him, but jeez. No spells for you, Master Mage. All right, can I get some hit points? I did. Fantastic. That was a huge level up. All right. I'm feeling a lot better. All right, so I'm gonna spread out a little bit. I think Bolt 1 only hits one unit, but I don't remember, and I don't want to get one dropped on multiple units at once. That would really soften us up for this final push. And we still have a couple Master Mages and a Golem and all kinds of stuff to go through. Yep, let's get this Medical Herb out of my inventory. I'm tired of looking at them. Okay, so they're coming to kind of flank me a bit here. I want to make sure I'm in position to lend support in case it's needed. And backing up with your flying units is not a big deal. For fights that are this uh, lengthy, like you have this much ground to cover, you really don't ever want to move backwards with any of your units. Look at that. Lyle can hit him from there. It still just looks crazy to me, right? Like, there's no way, but yes, he can do it. That is, of course, as long as he hits, which he did not. Yeah, it does hit multiple targets. I don't know if Lyle will survive this. He does. Wonderful. But I am not going back with any of my other team members, because I want to get to the end of this fight some at, at some point ever. <laughs> Fourteen's not bad. Hopefully... Someone like Balbs can get in there and finish him.
Uh, I don't really want to 1v1 this, so I'm going to back up. Oh, I did not mean to do that. Okay. Once again, I'm not very good at juggling weapons. I know it is a good strategy. Okay, well, at least we hit there. But, uh, I mess it up. <laughs> I might just be better off not doing that at all. At the very least, it would save me some embarrassment. Alright, he wants to chase, which is fine with me because that will give me a chance to have everybody kind of catch up here. Yeah, let's just get in there. How did that thing evade? <laughs> it's literally made out of heavy rocks. Come on, Zylo. I would not like it if this golem got too many more turns. So we'll see. The problem is, is nobody can move. Gort, you're overpowered, dude. <laughs> and he crits for 31. You're overpowered, man. Come on. It's not even fair. This is a fight where you... I know that I said that I never take party members based on terrain, but this is one where you could strongly consider not having any centaurs in your party. Because these dudes literally just can't move. Really actually missing Domingo right now. We look forward, we don't look back. close to wanting to come after these mages, but I still want everybody to kind of catch up. It's gonna take a while. But I'm not in a huge hurry. And once my centaurs can get to this grassy patch, it will speed things up significantly. You know what? I'm gonna get in there. Kokichi's gonna take a spell to the face, but I think he'll be just fine. Ooh, or... You know what? Let's do it. Forty-eight more XP for Gunts, I like that. I really don't want Balbs and Guns to take a spell at the same time. That seems kind of awful to me, so we're just going to send him this way. Will he survive? He might not. Okay, good. If I lost him in three fights in a row, I would just be ashamed. <laughs> Nope. 
No double attack. Too bad. I was kind of hoping for one. Somehow, when, when you're thinking, like, oh, a double attack would be sick here, it never happens. And when you least expect it, that's when they happen. They're just always surprising. Four attack, two defense, two speed, two more hit points. Yep, Kokichi is turning into a monster pretty quickly. And now the Halberd is obviously a night weapon, but you really can't do better when it comes to powerful night weapons than putting them on Kokichi. Like, he's just so good. You know, my other knights are still halfway across the board. Now, we are a little beat up, so I should be paying attention to that. But also, we're nearing the end of the fight, so I don't want to overuse my healing items, because we are immediately going to go into another fight here. But guns could certainly use it. If he's going to be of any use to us at all. Perfect spacing. Let's hit him. Valves is not really going to be able to touch this thing, but I'm going to hit him anyway. Two XP, that was probably just not worth it. Xylo hit this thing for seven? I doubt it. Yeah, he can hardly touch this thing. Ugh. This is not, uh, this is not how I wanted this to go. Okay, nine is not actually that much. Okay. I just have, like, PTSD from... When you first get the birds, they get one-shotted by anything that blinks at them. But they're, he's capable of surviving direct hits from fairly strong enemies now. Probably not like a Duran or a Dural, but uh, five defense, oh yeah. That's the guns I know. Do I want to take a swing at the uh, bow rider? I doubt it. Let's have him be the last shot. Definitely don't want him just rushing in there alone. Yep, let's do it. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. Ooh, I'm surprised. All right. Kokichi. And Nova says, Michela is said to possess the Sword of Light. You must enter her castle and get it. With that legendary weapon, you stand a much better chance against Dark Soul. And believe me, that is a fact. The Sword of Light is unbelievable. But we're going to have to go get that and enter the uh, Demon Castle next time because I'm all out of time for today. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.